I'm not sure it's all that, but uh, since military heart has the Okay, traders, that is 1 p.m. London time. Welcome to this week's live market and trade analysis session with me, Patrick Mundley. Before we get going today, as always, want to adhere to the risk disclaimer. Most pertinent to today's presentation is the fact that the views and opinions expressed by me are solely mine. They're not indicative or representative of those held by Tickmill UK or Tickmill Europe Limited. So for those of you who are here for the first time, a very brief introduction to myself. After I graduated from university, I joined a City PLC consulting firm. I left with some colleagues and went on to successfully co-found and exit a consulting startup, which was focused on C-suite executive search for technology businesses. Essentially, I had a front row seat to the dot com bubble, witnessing people make and lose a fortune in the market, sometimes quite literally overnight. So I decided to explore my curiosity for markets with some capital to play with and some time on my hands. I started day trading the S&P 500 or probably more appropriate at that stage, day gambling. After some early beginner's luck, I racked up some pretty solid gains. However, as is often the case, my beginner's luck ran out, and as the market phase changed, I began to average down into what ultimately became significant losing positions. I eventually uh, lost a uh, six-figure sum. Uh, to say this was a gut-wrenching and sobering experience is an understatement. So I really had to stand back and figure out if it was feasible for me to make a living from the markets. So I decided to get serious about trading, and I sought out a mentor with an excellent trading track record. Working with my mentor for a period of 18 months to two years was a time during which I had not just my technical game in terms of researching, developing, and extensively back and forward testing strategies that crucially suited my personality, and all of which were underpinned by a rigorous risk management approach. But most importantly, during that period of mentorship, I significantly developed my mental game. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had I really had to make the watershed shift from being a highly goal-orientated individual focused on financial gains to becoming purely process-orientated. So what does that mean? Well, it means I had to stop focusing on what I could make from the markets and start focusing solely on managing my mindset to allow me to consistently execute my trading strategy, oftentimes in the face of negative feedback from the markets in the form of losing trades. But once you become process orientated and you have a professional trading mindset, and you understand the true nature of trading being a numbers game in which you're simply uh, playing the probabilities, you lose that emotional investment and that hellish emotional roller coaster of living and dying by the outcomes of individual trades. So I'm no longer concerned with the outcome of individual trades, or even a small string of trades. My focus is on the next 100 trades, because I know if I focus on excellence in execution, my edge will demonstrate itself over an extended series of outcomes. My multi-strategy approach has delivered profitable annual returns since 2008. Since 2013, I've also been managing investor capital through a managed account service, again, delivering annual positive returns. Since 2010, I've mentored hundreds of private traders of all experience levels, from complete novices to former CME floor traders, in developing the technical and mental skills to reap consistent returns from the markets. In addition to my fund management and mentoring, I'm a resident market expert exclusively providing market and trade analysis to Tickmill clients. I provide an in-depth daily market outlook where I break down the technical drivers and the fundamental dynamics for the trading day ahead. I also provide daily technical trade setup videos for about two to three markets that I'm actively tracking for that trading session. And I share those through the Tickmill Trading View account. I'll post a link for that uh, at the end of today's presentation. I also run Tickmill's eMini Strategy Group, where I post a daily trade plan for the uh, S&P 500 or the E-mini S&P 500 futures contract, depending upon which one you trade. And that's specific for the cash trading session for the day ahead. I give my bias for the trading day, specific action areas where I'm looking to engage the market. And that, those pre-market plans have delivered now in excess of six and a half thousand points of profit since we launched the group uh, in April 21. 
The second tick mill strategy group I run is for traders who really want to take their trading to the next level. Uh, the tick mill futures telegram group is a real time environment where on a daily basis, I share in-depth insights, analysis and real time trades. I also provide live commentary uh, during the opening hour of the cash trading session in New York. Uh, these sessions essentially uh, provide a platform for traders to uh, watch how I identify asymmetric trading opportunities. Um, they ultimately help traders to develop a professional and consistent approach to navigating the markets and most importantly, mastering those mental mind games that have to uh, have to be made, uh, well, one, you certainly need to be aware of them, and two, in terms of uh, capturing your own mental approach and emotions in response to market data is a key uh, key milestone in developing as a professional trader and becoming consistently profitable in the market. So that gives you a flavor of where it is I'm coming from. Uh, so let's jump into today's charts. As always, uh, before we get going here. Um, what I would say is that if you have any questions or there are any charts you'd like me to take a look at that I don't cover in uh, in my uh, presentation, then feel free to drop those into the chat and I will cover them off at the end of today's session. Equally, um, if you have any questions uh, to do with trading that aren't specific to any trading instrument, feel free to drop those into the chat and I will uh, I'll share uh, or I'll cover those off at the end of the session. Okay, so let's get things going here with the S&P 500. As, uh, as those of you who were here from last week will know, we were looking for further upside post a corrective move, and we got that, uh, that set up. Uh, personally, I've been long this week and looking for that 4146. That's the equality objective. And for those of you who are here for the first time, when I talk about an equality objective, I'm talking about an equal legs move in the market. So versus the first swing and the reaction low there at 39.02. My target was 41.46, and we achieved that yesterday into the FOMC meeting. So in terms of the next setup or next opportunity, I'm looking for um, some consolidation here as we head into the cash trading session today and I'm going to be looking for an upside break through the resistance in that 4165 area to take out the prior swing highs uh, 4180 and what I'm looking for is a test here of this weekly R2 and projected ascending trend channel resistance coming in 4190s what you'll often find with the uh, these uh, these futures is that as they get near to this big figure level so obviously 4200 is the psychological magnet for the market you'll often find that as we head into those 4190s that we get a sharp pullback before making the next push so i'm looking for that dynamic to play out today as long as we maintain momentum divergence here on the four hour time frame you can see we've got potential for uh, triple momentum divergence as we test into that area be watching for bearish reversal patterns there to engage on the short side, looking for a three wave corrective move back in to retest these prior highs, 4109 and uh, as low there as daily projected range support, 4090. And then from there again, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to re engage on the long side to take out that 4200. And our next technical upside objective is 4222. At this stage, can't uh, can't really consider any meaningful bearish price action until we take out this internal trend line support here, which currently comes in around the 4080 level. Moving to the NASDAQ. <coughs> NASDAQ also uh, traded to target last week. We were looking for the pullback into the 11,800s to act as support. Got some nice bullish reversal patterns there. And we have traded up to test into our target area of 12,600. So what am I looking for with the NASDAQ now? Well, I'm anticipating that this is a five wave sequence that we're playing out here. So I'm looking for another leg to the upside. And my target, my next target for the NASDAQ is 12,770s. Now, that's the 127 extension of this last leg to the downside. Also, we have the weekly R2, 12,749, and daily projected range resistance, 12,800. So again, similar to the idea with the, uh, the S&P. From there, I'm watching for a pullback, looking for a three-wave move back into these prior highs, prior resistance to act as support, 12,340s, 
12,300. Look to set a base there, watch for bullish reversal patterns to engage on the long side, looking for the next leg to the upside. My next upside objective is going to be 13,049 on uh, on the nasdaq note also we've got this uh, trend line resistance coming in at that 12700 area as well so i'm looking for uh, some inter interim pullback from that 12700 zone uh, but as we then hold prior highs as support we look for further upside extension to target uh, 13049 dow jones <coughs> ym futures contract Again, traded to our target last week, we were looking for pullbacks to find support 33,700 to target 34,199 that trade played out we got some re rejection there price action has been a bit messy. Uh, and yesterday certainly we saw some volatility, and we are testing resistance now 34,400s. Um, whilst we hold there, there is the potential, and certainly uh, some a, a dynamic to be cognizant of for. Uh, for you guys is that um, obviously when we had the Fed uh, in an overtly hawkish uh, cycle and rhetoric, uh, the, the, the Dow was actually leading the market higher. And the reason for this is ostensibly that the Dow contains more of what you consider to be value stocks, you know, your cyclicals, utilities, healthcare, etc. And so in a tightening cycle, uh, funds tend to flow into those uh, those value stocks and you tend to see the the, the uh, YM or the Dow Jones outperform. But with the uh, the potential shift in uh, perspective yesterday from uh, Fed Chair Powell, obviously he did, they raised rates by 25 bits and are likely to do so in, in future, or certainly he suggested they're likely to do so in future meetings. I think we could well see a pause now, but um, the market is taking that uh, uh, as a bullish signal that, um, that you know there is an end in sight now, a terminal rate to this high, uh, race, uh, <laughs> rate move. And as such, starting to see some outperformance in the NASDAQ, obviously growth stocks there. So as we get a loosening in financial conditions and capital becomes a little bit freer, uh, that supports these uh, the growth stocks. And you'll generally get uh, the, the S&P following the, the NASDAQ to the upside. And what we'd anticipate then will be there'll be underperformance uh, by the Dow Jones. And so that's why I'm seeing or we're seeing a bit of a lag here. So I, I don't immediately have a, uh, a trading opportunity as such here. In the Dow Jones, I think we'll see a bit of congestion, a lot of sideways action now as the potentially the Nasdaq and the S&P uh, lead to the upside. So nothing for me to do in the Dow at the moment. The DAX. So we were looking at pullbacks into this trend line support and consolidation and break to the upside. We are trading just shy of our target zone, 15,500. So what am I looking for now with the DAX? Well, we have certainly got some momentum divergence in play here. We've got the high volume low on the weekly chart, 15,530. So what I'm anticipating, similar to these other equity indexes now, let's see, we've got a five wave sequence potentially here. So let's say we, we run up into the... 5,600 area, this um, projected ascending trend line resistance. So I'd be looking for any move into this zone as long as we maintain momentum divergence, i.e. make new high in price, fail to make uh, similar uh, highs in terms of the momentum study. Then I'm going to be watching for bearish reversal patterns here, and I think we get a tradable pullback. And what I'd be looking for would be initially move into what could be uh, the start of a significant uh, wedge pattern. Let me just tidy this up here. There we go. So any move up into this 15,500, 15,600 area, I watch for bearish reversal patterns to engage on the short side. What I'd anticipate is from there, we pull back into the prior highs trend line support. And I'd look for a three wave corrective move back into test our current potential way for low. And we have weekly projected range support coming in there at 15,000. So that's the type of pattern I'm watching for in the DAX. And obviously that aligns with the perspective in terms of the NASDAQ and the, the S&P is there. If we uh, see a deeper pullback, if we look at the daily chart, let me just blend that up for you. <clears throat> so on the daily chart, we could actually see a deeper corrective move. So we're trading up into our target zone here, 15,500. 
uh, watch for if we don't find support in that uh, 15,000 level, could see a deeper pull that we have an S3, we have this daily sending trend line support 14,800. But once again, even if we do pull back to there, I'll be watching for bullish reversal patterns to re-engage on the long side, looking for further upside extension. Let's see where we can head there. We can start to think then about 15,800 as the next upside objective. Uh, for the Nasdaq. Moving to the Nikkei. Let's get a multi time frame view. So, the Nikkei, we were looking for a break to the upside. We haven't had that just yet. Uh, we had the uh, Asian markets coming back from the Lunar New Year holidays, and we have been in a consolidation pattern. So, what I'm looking for here with the Nikkei. Let's just pull this across. So I look for any pullbacks into the projected pitchfork support. 27,150. Watch for bullish reversal patterns there. Our next upside objective for the Nikkei is 27,920. At this stage, obviously, any closes back through this projected pitchfork support would be a bearish development. And, uh, and we'd then be looking at downside targets. But for now, against this projected support area, watch for bullish reversal patterns engage on the longer side. The nifty. So last week, you'll remember we were looking for a pullback into test support at the 17,630, which was a symmetry swing objective. When I talk about symmetry swings, what I'm talking about is equal moves uh, in in a cycle so as we were trading up into this high the last major correction was here so we overlay that versus our high and that gave us a 17,626 target for the corrective move we traded into there a nice bullish reaction traded up into train channel resistance 18,000 and uh 18,094 for pulling back again and we're testing this area again as support now i want to be careful here because if we take Eight. Let me draw this in view. If we don't hold here as a double bottom, then there are there is another downside objective that we want to pay attention to. Let's just get rid. Uh, no, let's keep that. We'll bring in our fib retracement tool. So if we can't hold this double bottom, the next area of interest for the Nikkei is going to be. Uh, an equality objective versus the swing high at 18,383. So that gives us the 78.6% retracement of our last five wave sequence to the upside. Uh, this move is overlapping in nature, so it suggests at this stage that it's corrective. That's the information we need to take from the overlapping nature of the price action. And so any move into this target zone, 17,220, 17,285. Another possibility is that we trade in there, watch for bullish reversal patterns from there to once again engage on the long side, looking for our next leg to develop to the upside. Moving to the bonds. A positive response, obviously, from Treasuries as uh, as they rallied yesterday. As bond yields come down, Treasury prices increase. Obviously, there's an inverse uh, relationship there. Still waiting, though. We haven't had the breakout through our 109.60. I'm uh, I'm watching for a breakthrough there. If we do on a daily time frame, a daily close through there, I want to re-engage on the long side. We've got a target then at 116.63. So that's the uh, setup. It still remains valid, and we're just consolidating below our breakout zone there to uh, to re-engage on the long side. Moving to forex here, <clears throat> starting with the dollar index. Uh, I was long the dollar index uh, as we broke down into our target zone. Covered that yesterday for a small loss. I'm still of the belief at this stage, given the technical setup. Let me just extend that through there so have we got a five wave sequence here that could play out in terms of the dollar index to complete a five wave sequence so any move into this 130 area as long as we maintain momentum divergence i still think we can see at least a three wave corrective move play out in the dollar index obviously if we lose the 100 level all bets are off and we are heading down to I think I mentioned 98 as our next downside objective 
for the dollar index. But let's see how we trade if we test this uh, weekly S3, daily projected range support, and this descending trend channel support as well. Watch the bullish reversal patterns there. Obviously, it's key, well, for me anyway, in terms of my strategies, it's key that we don't make a new low in terms of the momentum study there. So uh, watch for that divergence to be maintained, i.e. new low in price, no new low in momentum. Bullish reversal patterns, there's an opportunity there on the long side to play just for a correction. I'm not expecting anything meaningful. I think this uh, trend channel resistance Currently comes in 103.30s on the daily time frame. Uh, rejection from there is going to be the next leg to the downside. And I am looking for a break of 100 down to target that 98 level as our next downside objective. Euro dollar, we have the ECB out shortly. Have they already announced? They were looking, we're looking for a 50 bits hike from the ECB. And what I'm looking for here is a three-way corrective move back into test the prior highs here 10930s is the area to watch uh, from there we get bullish reversal patterns i want to engage on the long side our next upside objective for the euro dollar is 11266 that's the 61.8% retracement of our 20 uh, 21 2022 down cycle so that's the the target there on the euro dollar again can't really get meaningfully bearish until we take out this in, this interim trend channel support through 10870s sterling boe have uh have been out and uh relatively neg initial negative reaction to uh to the rate move there I'm still looking at this as a bull flag scenario. So any moves into 122.20s, watch for bullish reversal patterns to play the break of this bull flag resistance back through 124 gives us a test of 125 as the next upside objective for sterling. So remain constructive on sterling, certainly above this daily trend channel support 122.20s. Dollar yen. <laughs> So last week, you'll recall, I was looking for resistance at the trend channel here, 130.40s, 130.40. We've seen that. So this move is starting. It looks like it's starting. I would anticipate a retest price cycle lows now. 127.20s, as, uh, as bounces remain contained, we look for a downside extension. We are targeting 125 as the next downside objective. I'm going to move things along here from a time perspective. So let's take a look at the Aussie as our, uh, as our proxy for these Antipodeans. I am looking for resistance now to develop uh, 7150s, 7160s, weekly R1, 7180s. So we've got momentum divergence. So we're looking for a rejection in this area to play for a three wave corrective move, initially targeting 7050. Now, if buyers don't start, uh, we can see a deeper pull back into test support back to the 6980s. However, if we do get bullish reversal patterns from there, I'd be looking to move out of short positions, re-engage on the long side. We are targeting a test of 73.30, which is that weekly uh, trend channel resistance. And we also have that equality objective 73.40s versus our swing structure and swing low at 66.20s. Moving to gold. So gold uh, traded up into the target zone, 1950 is what we were looking for. I'm now looking for a correction to ensue here. We have uh, momentum divergence in play, we're making new highs in price. We're not getting any meaningful new high in momentum. So I'm watching now for a breakthrough. Let's draw this in for you guys. So we look for a break here of support back through these price cycle highs, 1950. So look for a break through 1950 to target a three-wave corrective move down into test trend channel support at the 1900 level. Then from there, we let let the bullish uh, pattern refresh and we watch for bullish reversal patterns at the 1900 level to engage on the long side, looking for the next upside objective, which is going to be a test towards the $2,000 mark. Um, at this stage, it would take a close back through 1900 to suggest the more meaningful high in place. And then we'd be looking for a deeper correction before higher once again. Moving to crude oil. This one's getting close to a setup for me. I had a good run in crude lot, uh, in January, racking up three, uh, three or 400 pips of profit. So I'm looking for a test of 
the $75 level here of crude oil. We are then looking for bullish reversal patterns. We look for a break then back through this internal trend channel resistance to engage on the long side. It gives us a nice chunky target above here at 83.80, which is the daily equality objective versus the swing low at 72.50. So still looking for that test. Obviously, any close back through the $74 level would be a bearish development, opening a move back down to test 72s as the next support on the downside. Last but not least, let's take a look at Bitcoin. So Bitcoin, we are looking for the yearly pivot to get tested here. So 26,800 is our next upside objective. So we are looking for further upside objective. Might see a bit of stickiness at 25,000. They tend to stall out around these round figures, but ultimately we look for that 26,000. Let's get it in here, the yearly pivot. So I want us to move up into the yearly pivot. And from there, I'll be looking for a more meaningful correction to ensue. Something then equivalent to our potential wave one low there. Uh, so let's take a look on the four hours roll out. And so once we get, if we get up into that 26,000 area, what we will be looking for is something similar in scope and scale to what did we get here so we have 18,300 down to 60 so about 2,000 uh, pit pullback so what we look for is move into the pivot and then 26 back down should see us trading at that 24,000 area and then from there we'll see if bulls are going to step back in for the next leg to the upside Okay, so that concludes the whistle stop tour for this week. I hope you found that helpful. Let me see now if I have any questions. Uh, Tushar, sorry, I missed the Telegram link. Look, I'm going to post the uh, Facebook link, first of all, into the chat. So for those who are interested in receiving that daily trade plan for the S&P 500, and want to learn more about the Telegram group and what's required to access that, you just simply request access um, to the Facebook group. That will get you in there. And then you can uh, you can uh, PM me for details on how you can uh, how you can join the Telegram trading group. Uh, what you will require as a minimum there is a funded Tickmill account. And then you can get access uh, to that group and receive uh, much greater insight and in-depth interaction with me on a daily basis and like i say real-time trades as well um another question uh may we see meli m-e-l-i let's see i'm not uh not familiar with that off the top of my head um, is this what you're talking about um Jorge? Jorge? Let's have a look. See what the chart is telling us anyway. So yeah, we're in a bullish. So on the weekly time frame, we have taken out descending trend channel resistance. So initially we start to think about a corrective move. <clears throat> so we bring in the Trend based fib extension. Our first port of call obviously is an equal legs, which we have come just shy of. So, looking at the current structure here, I would say we are in a sequence that is about to complete into 1260. So, let's see if we get this type of scenario. So, I'd be looking for a move into 1260, 1270. Watch for uh, bearish reversal patterns there momentum divergence and then you're going to get a three-wave correction back into test the breakout zone and then from there you see a buyer step back in for the next uh, big leg to the upside or potential for a more meaningful high in place as always what you want to be watching as we get into that area that 1260 1270 watch for uh, that momentum divergence to be maintained and that will be your trigger then as an opportunity on the short side you can also see the potential for a big inverse head and shoulders scenario to play out on a move back into 80, uh, 890 but first port of call is going to be 1260 1270 momentum divergence maintained bearish reversal patterns retest that breakout point at 10,000 and well let's say 10,090 
11,000 area. Does that make sense, Jorge? Okay, I don't see any other questions coming through. As always, traders, plan the trade, trade the plan, and most importantly, manage your risk. Until next week, thanks very much.